Let's answer the third one first. We've been, not been contacted in any way about, about Galleon. I read about that in the paper and, and uh, uh, about the allegation apparently of a contact between a Goldman director and Galleon. And I think in one of the stories, I read something about presumably Galleon trading on it. But the, the answer is no contact from anybody. And uh, I can't pronounce the name of the guy that runs Galleon. <laughs> the, uh, the Wells notice, uh, I've talked to a number of lawyers about that, and uh, I think when we got a, we didn't get the Wells notice, but when the Gen Re executives got the Wells notice, I'm quite sure we stuck that in the 10K or 10Q that, that came up. Maybe, and maybe we filed an 8K announcing it. Uh, uh, that was not us receiving it ourselves, but, but certain executives receiving it. Uh, I have been on the board of at least one well-known company over the past 40 years, and I won't narrow it down any more than that, but uh, where they received a Wells notice and they didn't publicize it, and in, in, in truth, it was, it, it was nothing. I mean, it, it, uh, so uh, lawyers tell me that, that if you regard it as material, uh, you report it. I don't think if I'd received something relating to the Abacus transaction based on what I know about it, I would have considered it material to a company that was making many, many, many billions of dollars a year. Uh, Charlie? Well, I wouldn't have regarded it as, as material either. If every company reported every little thing that might happen with what they regarded a tiny probability, we'd just have unlimited confusing reports. There has to be some materiality standard, and, and you don't want to give blackmail potential to people that are mad at you and make claims. I'm not saying that's what the SEC was doing, but... but no, but it could happen with a lot of... It, it could happen with individual it could, it could happen with sure. other people, yes. Yeah. And I don't know what percentage of Wells notices result in something that's material to the company, but I'll... My guess is that, that uh, there are plenty of them that, that wouldn't be. And, of course, the bigger the company, the less likelihood it, that it, it would be material. And then your other question about who, would, uh, who I would want run it if, if Lloyd wasn't running it. Uh, I, I guess if Lloyd had a twin brother, I'd go for him. But I, 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 I've never given that a thought. We think about who would run Berkshire, if, <laughs> plenty, but... but uh, there's really no reason to think about that. There wasn't any reason to think about, in my view, back in 1970 when they had the Penn Central problem, whether somebody other than Gus Levy should be running Penn Central, and, uh, be running uh, Goldman. And, and when the event happened in connection with the Bosky thing, uh, uh, I, John Weinberg was running it then, and I thought that, that John Weinberg was a terrific manager of, of, of Goldman. So I, I just don't see this as as reflecting on Lloyd. I think, as Charlie, and we've got strong feelings, that there's plenty of stuff goes on in Wall Street that we don't like, but we do not think it's specific, and we know it isn't specific to Goldman. Charlie? Well, there are plenty of CEOs I'd like to see gone in America, <laughs> but Lloyd Blankfein is not one of them. <laughs> okay, number three. 